Hello and welcome to Clay to Canopy, the show where I attempt to make just about everything from the ground up. You guys, it is that time. It is my favorite season. Fall is coming. In honor of fall and to get this season kicked off properly, I am gonna start off with a tutorial on how to make a ceramic jack-o'-lantern. If you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. I do many tutorials on things that you would find in the home here where I attempt to make everything from the ground up. So the method I'm gonna be using today is going to be the coil method, starting with a pre-prepared slab that I made the other day. And if you'd like to learn how to roll out a slab by hand, please check out the description. So let's go ahead and get started on making this lantern. All right, so I'm gonna unwrap my slab here that's been setting up overnight. And first thing I'm gonna do is find something round to cut a circle out of. And I'm gonna do a very small, piece here so that we can do it in live time and pretty much get it all in one session. I'm gonna just use the lid to my slip container here, but you could use anything round you can find. I'm gonna lay this down, and the first thing I'm gonna do is take my fettling knife, and I'm just gonna go around and lightly trace, scoring the top of my surface. I'm not cutting anything, I'm just kind of giving myself a little bit of a guideline. And the benefit is that if I'm tracing and I mess up, oops, my knife slipped and I made a boo-boo, I can easily just take my finger and blend that line away and it's gone. But if I'm cutting, once I've cut the piece and if I cut all the way through and I make that mistake, then my piece is gonna be ruined. So I like to always just go in and just kind of trace around where I want my line to be. I do that first. And then I can remove the thing I'm using as a template and go, okay, if I'm happy with the circle, I can now take my knife and go ahead and cut through. Okay, and there's my round circle. And then I just wanna show you the condition that this slab is in that's set up overnight. You can see it's fairly stiff now, and if I bend it too much, I start getting this cracking. This stage is called leather hard, and it refers to something that has the look and the texture of leather. This is where you want your bottom to be because you don't want it too soft where when you're working on it, it could potentially just absorb too much water and your bottom can become vulnerable. Prepping it the day before is very helpful. So the next thing we need to do is we need to start beginning to roll coil. You want fresh clay for your coil, so I'm gonna pull over my bag here. Now, if you watched my earlier video on how to make pinch pots, I did talk about not having air holes in your piece. So my goal is always to try and stick around nothing thicker than the handle of this fettling knife. For coil, because this process requires me to do some blending, I'm actually gonna be rolling my coil just slightly thicker than this handle so that when I do go ahead and blend, that will thin out to being roughly around the size of that handle. I'm just starting with a chunk of clay and then I'm gonna just squish in my hands that chunk of clay and I'm just going around and squishing it because this clay does not like to be handled too much. The faster I can get to the shape I need, the better. And so by just doing some squishing, I can gauge, okay, it's a little bit close to where I want it to be. And I'm gonna just squish a little bit more here. Now I can take it down and begin to roll my coil. When you're rolling your coil, you want to use the palms of your hands because if you use your fingertips, you might get lumps all over the place. I'm going to be rolling by putting very light pressure with the palms of my hand on my coil and moving in an outward motion. And as I move in an outward motion, it kind of stretches my coil a little bit. But the thing I did want to talk about is the amount of pressure. And this is where people tend to kind of mess up a little bit. If you put too much pressure down as you're doing this process, you'll flatten your coil and you'll not get good results. Imagine you have a raw egg under your palm of your hand, uncooked egg that has not been boiled, just came fresh from wherever you got it from. And if you push too hard on that egg while you're rolling it around under your palm, you'll crack the egg. So you wanna make sure that the amount of pressure that you're putting on this doesn't crack your egg, right? So, okay, here we go. Starting in the center, and I'm just doing a little bit of, of pressure not to crack my egg. And I'm doing this in a fairly fast motion. And if I'm getting this weirdness happening here, I'll just come over here and fix up this end. 
and then fix up this end to kind of even it out. I'm trying to stay pretty close to this guy here and that looks about good so I can use this now for my first layer. I'm going to pull this over and always when you're attaching that first layer, especially since this clay consistency is leather hard and this clay is fresh clay, you always want to slip and score whenever you're joining clay that is at different moisture contents. So I'm going to go ahead and score this by scratching along the edge here. I'm going to go in two directions so that I can make sure I get a good scoring. And then I'm also going to do the same to my coil. Okay, <laughs> next step, I'm going to apply some slip. And you only have to apply slip to one of the two. I find it a little less messy to just apply it to the base than to apply it to my coil. Go ahead and smack that on there. Here where it overlaps, it's the same consistency. So I don't need to add any more slip and score this section because this coil is the same moisture content. Oh my gosh, cat hair. No, maybe that's brush hair. It's the same dampness. I can just stack it on top of itself and not have to worry about anything. And as long as you are working within the same work session and you're continuing going, you don't have to slip and score each one. In fact, it's bad for the piece because if you're slipping and scoring every single layer, it can become overly saturated with moisture and begin to break down and fall apart. So it's definitely not a good idea to keep doing that more than necessary. I really wanna make sure that I get a good connection between my base and my top coil here. So I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna begin blending. You could also do this with the tip of your fettling knife, making sure that I'm really getting that bottom layer nice and in there. Let's tip this up for a second. Blending on that inside. Okay, and then you can just kind of run your finger along. Bottom piece, you definitely want to also blend, make sure that you get that same connection down. So I'm just going to take my fettling knife for that and draw little bits of the clay from that outside coil, pulling it down. Okay, so my base is good and attached and any little bits of clay that you might be pulling up off of your piece you can throw right into your slip container because that'll continue to create more slip as it's going. So sometimes I'll just clean off my tools and get it in there. I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm gonna start rolling out some coils and stacking it up onto itself. There is gonna be a point to where I cannot work anymore because it's gonna be too much weight. You'll be able to feel you know, where things are a little bit funky and things start feeling like they're gonna wanna collapse on you. At that point, those are gonna be stopping points and we'll get into that in a minute, but let me get some more coils on here. Now you want to think about this like brick laying. You don't want your start and stop places to be all at the same point because if all of my joints here where they all began and ended right here at this point, this would create a very weak wall. So when you look at like something that's made out of brick, you see the bricks that are staggered and they kind of overlap each other and the joints are not all in one place because that would create a vulnerability. So you want to make sure you do the same thing here. So I'm going to start this and make sure that the next one kind of ends in a different place so that when I put the next coil on, it overlaps this little section here and I can make sure that that provides a really good strong structure.
As I'm stacking here, I'm going to stack just slightly on the outside. This is gonna to begin to give my form some shape. Because I'm going for pumpkin, I want it to come out and have that roundness happening. So by stacking this coil just slightly on the outside edge, it'll begin to create that form. We're gonna get into blending in a minute here. The way you blend will also alter the direction of your coil. You don't have to have too much coming out to make that change because as you begin to blend, it's also gonna do some shaping. I'm gonna get one more on here before we do some coil blending. Now I don't like where this is gonna end because if I leave this here, it's gonna end here again. So I'm just gonna take a chunk of this off so it can end at a staggered place. And now we'll begin to deal with some blending. If I blend in the downward motion from the inside, it's gonna wanna make my piece kinda come up and in. And that's okay if that's the direction you're going for. But in this case, since I'm trying to make it pumpkin, and I want it to come out a little more. So if I blend in the upward motion from the inside, it'll naturally come out a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and do from the inside in a slightly upward motion. See if you can see that. And this is gonna depend on person to person because every person has a different touch and a different way of handling the clay so i might put a lot of pressure on it maybe when you're making it you put a very light pressure or maybe what i think is a normal pressure might be a really light pressure to you this is something you're going to have to play around with and get used to how much you blend and then that is going to dictate how you stack this coil so if you're someone who's very heavy-handed in blending maybe you don't stack this coil out at all maybe you just leave it on top because when you blend it'll naturally come out it makes sense as you're doing it and you're working it i would recommend that maybe you just try a small sample first just to get a feel for how you're going so you can determine where you want to stack your coil so i'm going to just go around and keep blending the inside in an upward motion that's going to bring it out and after that we're going to blend the outside and to blend i'm just taking my finger and kind of smushing just a little bit of that clay coil getting rid of any of that division in the line from where the coil is so i'm just smushing and pulling the clay up with me as I go. For the outside, it's actually the opposite. So if I was to blend downward, it's gonna kick it out even more. And if I was to blend upward, it's gonna wanna push it back in. So at this point, I would assess your piece. Okay, does it look like it's round enough? If it looks like you need to go out a little bit more, go ahead and do your blending in the downward motion to kick it out a little bit more. If it looks like you need to, you know, close it up a little bit, go ahead and blend in the upward motion. If you're exactly where you wanna be, you might wanna think about having adjusted your coil pieces the next time so that, you know, this can be offset slightly. Otherwise, you might need to just worry about using a very gentle touch to do the blending and then it doesn't matter whether you're going upwards or downwards, you just need to have a light touch and pick one. In this case, I am just gonna pick one because I like the shape that it is right now and I'm gonna very gently blend in the upward direction, trying not to smush and change my shape too much. It's not the end of the world if you get some shaping that you're not happy with. In a moment, I'm gonna show you how to fix any of that shaping. You do wanna be careful when you're blending in the upward motion that you don't rip off that top coil. So you might wanna like place your thumb here and as you're blending, just kinda of use it as a guide to hold it in place. It's okay for this to look really rough right now. You're not gonna do any of the smoothing out and making it nice and pretty until the second day after you've let it set up, so. Don't worry about that. You just wanna make sure that you get it good and blended so it's nice and strong. At this point, if you're not happy with the shape and it's looking kind of funky, just take your hands and kind of use it to press and pinch around. It's very similar to the pinch pot method where you're just using your hands to form the piece into a little bit more aesthetically pleasing looking shape. You can see when I talked about this earlier, it getting too floppy, this is starting to become fairly floppy that when I tap on it, you know, it doesn't have too much of a strong structure. 
This would be a point where you might wanna stop and let it set up a little bit or give it an overnight rest and you can wrap it up in some plastic, let it sit overnight and usually that does the trick into getting it stiff enough for you to continue on. I actually have prepped a piece yesterday. Well, let's just switch over to that piece so that we can continue going. So I have my piece here that I set up and you can see as I'm tapping on it, it's not moving anywhere. But it means that it's pretty stable and it's ready to continue building on top of it. That other one I was just working on, when I tapped on it, it was really floppy. So if I continued adding any more weight to it, it was gonna wanna collapse on itself. From time to time, you're going to need to stop working on your piece, maybe set it aside for maybe 10 or 15 minutes out in the sun, or wrap it up overnight and set it aside for the evening and come back to it the next day, which is exactly what I've done here. It's not so dry to the point where I can't actually move around the clay and blend it. I still have the ability to work on its surface and manipulate the shape a little bit, but at least it's stiff enough to hold structure so that if I continue building on top of it, I'm not gonna get any major issues. At this point is pretty close to what the leather hard stage would be when we talked about the base of the slab. You always wanna make sure you blend every layer before you set it aside to rest. Whether it's going outside or gonna get wrapped up, you wanna make sure all of those layers are nice and blended. Because this is a new work session and I'm gonna be continuing to add on to this pumpkin, I'm going to need to slip and score this first layer. Whether you stuck it outside for 15 minutes in the sun or if you set it up overnight to get a little stiffened up, you're still gonna need to slip and score that layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll out the next coil that's gonna go on top. I'm gonna score now. Now it's time to start bringing this inward because I'm starting to close this off. So I'm gonna be stacking slightly on the inside. Slip on here. Almost not enough here. So you can see I'm just slightly here, stepped back just a bit. And I need to score that end because I still have some area here that's exposed. And there we go. I no longer need to slip and score. As long as I slip and score just the first layer, I'm good to go. Now before I go crazy and closing this off, I'm gonna get in here and blend from the inside because there's gonna be a point now once it begins getting closed off that I'm not gonna be able to blend anymore from the inside. So at this point, while I can still get my hand in here, I'm gonna make sure that I blend out, especially blending that spot that I just joined. And if you're not moving enough clay with your thumb or your finger, you can go ahead and do that with your fettling knife. my thumb in there. I know you can't see it on camera, but I am getting my thumb in there to get that good and blended. And if it makes you feel better, go ahead and put that coil on first, blend it from the inside, and then you can continue to do the blending on the outside. Structurally, you don't really need to blend both sides. It just makes it stronger. I like blending both the inside and the outside because it just makes for a stronger piece. And also, since this is going to be jack-o'-lantern, I am gonna be cutting a face into it. I wanna make sure that when I do, it doesn't look all funky on the inside. I can go ahead and begin, finish closing that off. You might want to roll the top coils a little bit thinner, and that way it doesn't add as much weight to it. Try and get that last bit blended. I just have a finger resting underneath it, supporting my clay as I'm doing this blending bit so that it doesn't cave in on me. A bit of the pinching method. You can see my hole is fairly small now. So I'm gonna go ahead and smack a piece on the top. And this could just be like the pinching method where you just take a little chunk here and get it on there. Close it off. If you're good and airtight, when you hit it, you shouldn't get too much deforming. It should kind of act as a bubble. 
I can now flip it over and look at the mess that I created at the bottom. Take my finger and because it's still soft enough, come in, clean that up a bit. Now's the time you wanna do any of your big, trying to remove any of the larger cracks that maybe didn't really blend too well. Any of those points, you can manipulate some of the shaping a bit by just taking your hand and kind of patting it around. Get it into that pumpkin-y shape that works well for you. Don't worry about the bumpy texture on the surface, that's okay. At this point, we're gonna let this set up again. It needs to have another overnight setup so that we can come in and blend it smooth and begin carving it. Go ahead and get it all wrapped in plastic and set aside. I will be back to show you the next step after that. I actually started this really early in the morning and I gave it a little bit of time in the sun and wrapped and because today was such a hot day, I'm able to get to it and not having to give it an overnight. It's pretty stiff. I'm gonna do a little bit of showing you how to get this cleaned up. Normally to do this job, you might use a wooden paddle, but what if you don't have a wooden paddle and you know you're just trying to get the job done but use whatever you have laying around. So I'm gonna show you how to do this with with clay tools and then also with maybe stuff that you could find around your house. The first thing I would do is I'd assess my form and if I have really large unevenness, I would take a wooden paddle and I would go ahead and smack around. Now if you don't have a wooden paddle, you can use a rock. So you wanna go and find a flat or something that's kind of smooth rock and then as long as you can find a smooth side to that rock, you can use a rock to come in and deal with your larger bumps by just tapping along. And I'm just using this for those any big bumps that I might see on my form that I need to smack into place. And so this rock is basically replacing my not having a wooden paddle on hand. Now you do wanna be careful, there is no air hole in this thing right now, right? It's just a giant ball of air because we sealed off the top. And if you put too much pressure on one side, it may cause some cracking on the opposite side. So when you are paddling, you wanna just be really careful that you're not putting, you know, don't go whack it at it. You just wanna make sure you're using it just to get rid of some of those whatever little imperfections you would have and make sure you check the opposite side of it as you're whacking on one side that you didn't, you know, bust any kind of hole on the other side. The next thing you might use is wooden or rubber rib to do some of this blending to get rid of some of the larger bumps. And these work really well, but again, this is a kind of a specialty ceramic tool. So maybe if you don't have one of these on hand, but you wanna go ahead and still do your smoothing. I'll show you what that looks like for both. I'm sure you have probably got a spoon though, right? Okay, so you want to take your spoon and the spoon also can get rid of some of those lumps. I'm going in here and smacking around. Ooh. But also the backside of the spoon, if you just take a finger, will help you do some of this rubbing and getting rid of that and smoothing things out. And actually you can see this spoon this spoon's like money right here. It's working better than what that rubber rib was working. And once you get it all smoothed up, then it'd be ready for carving. Okay, I've got it as smooth as I care to go. I'm gonna put the stem of my pumpkin on here. So I'm just gonna take a bit of scrap clay and I'm just gonna, in my hands, roll a little bit of a cone shape type of thing here. Stems are not always smooth, so I'm gonna take the edge of my little ribbon tool and just come in, remove some chunks. You could even use the corner of here. They have these tiny little imperfections in nature, which is good to have. Take my fettling knife here, cut the tip off and using my needle tool, I'm just gonna poke a little bit here Make it have that natural looking like I just broke it off of the vine kind of deal. All right. Just give it a tap here. And then a bit of a twist. There we go, it's ready to be attached. So before I attach it, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little welt out of the top of my piece here. Remove a little section. So it looks like a little bit better of a transition. I'm not cutting a hole through. I'm just removing a little bit of material using my ribbon tool or loop tool, whichever you'd like to call it. 
All right, and because this is a small little area here, probably not gonna wanna really get in there with my serrated rib as far as that part goes. I most certainly can use it for here. And since my stem is not that much thicker than the handle of my fettling knife, I should be okay here. But I will take my needle tool and come in and do my scoring with the needle tool. My slip here, I've been adding all of my scraps as I go. Don't forget to add a little water. I'm at that point where it's like a little too much. I need to add some water soon. So make sure you do that. All right, this guy's going on. Don't forget to blend. You don't want this sticking straight up in the air too much because if you're transporting this to wherever it's gonna go to get fired, more risky could be more vulnerable. So sometimes I just like to give it a little kick and add, doing that adds in a little bit more of the cracking which actually looks a lot more natural. Now it's time to put in some lines because pumpkins have growing lines going on. So come in and just Right now I'm just doing some marking out. I'm gonna do a bit more of carving these a little bit deeper, but I'm just kind of laying out the lines here. All right, so I'm gonna come in with my stick. This is a good place for that wooden stick to come in and use that to carve at the sections. It'll help pick up the material. If you don't have the wooden stick on hand, you can also use the tip of your fettling knife. All right, it's like a, more like a basketball. I'm gonna give it a squish. I wanna clean up some of those edges. I'm just gonna use my finger. It's time to determine where his face is gonna go. So I think that since I kicked this this way, that what you're actually looking at to me looks like the front. So I'm gonna carve his face there and I'm gonna try and do this sideways and try not to mess this up so that you guys can see it. I'm just gonna use my needle tool to do a very shallow carve. Kind of laying out my lines. I think I'm gonna have to do this on my side, guys, sorry. Very traditional pumpkin look. What do you think of that? Does it look good? What does it look like? Well, hello, sir. Good to see you. Okay. <laughs> the tip of my fettling knife is gonna be way too thick to try and carve out those circles. I'm gonna use my needle tool to kind of poke around to get it to relieve out, just for the eyes at least. So I'm gonna poke all the way through and poke my line all the way around. All right, I'm gonna let it fall inside because I'm gonna be cutting open the top. Get a finger in there, get that cleaned up. I should be able to use my fettling knife to go ahead and go in for the nose. Almost as messy as the real thing. This top part you wanna make sure that you're gonna do clean because it's gonna actually become the lid. And just like carving a regular pumpkin, you're gonna wanna cut on an angle so it supports itself. I'm just gonna come in and give myself the guidelines first where I'm planning to cut. And when I do this, I wanna make sure that I'm doing this at an angle. I'm gonna blend that top part that I never got to, but I wanna make sure I don't knock where that joint was so that I don't mess it up. I'm gonna clean up this little bit because I'm not gonna be able to live with that. But don't go too crazy because it is fitted right now. Blend it a little bit. Eye is still in there. Both of his eyes, oh gosh. Remove his eyes. 
I'm gonna just clean up just the underside a bit because again, whatever you leave in clay is gonna stay that way when it goes in the kiln, when it comes back out. So I'm just cleaning up just the underside a bit. You can mess around with cleaning up the little bits here and there, but should be pretty much ready for the kiln. I am gonna give him an overnight wrapping just because this little piece was a new add-on that I did, so I will completely wrap the entire thing in plastic and make sure that it has a good chance to set up and really get itself attached. That is pretty much all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, share, and subscribe if you have not done so already, and I hope to see you soon. Oh! Oh! Okay.